Hi, Travel Bugs. Thank you for tuning in. This is the follow-up to our Spanish Taxes for Expats video. It's been getting great feedback, but with many questions still up in the air. Tax regulations in Spain are constantly changing, and it's hard to keep up with so much information. The different opinions and interpretations of Spanish tax laws can get confusing, and a mistake can end up costing you. As retired Americans, we want to make sure we make the right choices to protect our money, make it last, and stay retired. But sometimes, no matter how much research and preparation we put in today, that knowledge can be obsolete tomorrow with the constant changes in tax regulations. That's why it's important to seek the advice from a tax professional who is up to date, ready to guide you through the process and help you make the right decisions. We asked you to send us your burning questions and you delivered. Thank you so much for that. We've put together a summary of answers for you coming from the professionals themselves, Pro Spain Consulting. If you're new to our channel, we are Diane and Guillermo. We retired early from the United States in 2018, sold everything, and embarked on a quest to find our dream home somewhere in the world. Our videos are about scouting cities and providing information that you may find useful if you are considering living abroad. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. Thanks so much for taking time to talk with us today, Alina and Flor. Would you please introduce yourself to our viewers and let them know what services Pro Spain Consulting offers and your position in the company and where you're at. And Alina, we'll start with you. So yeah, thank you guys to invite us. We have a really pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Alina, I'm a lawyer. I'm also a Festor Administrative and sometimes it's a tax uh, advisor in Spain, a special tax advisor. Uh, so, and I'm very specialized in, about the taxes uh, for the experts. We're based in Marbella, but we also have an office in Barcelona. Okay, fantastic, thanks. And Flor? So yes, I also want to say thank you for letting us join you in this meeting. And well, me myself, I am responsible of legal department and also tax department for Spain Consulting. And we are really pleased to, to help you all with all of your questions. So once again, we really appreciate the time, you taking the time for this Q&A to answer so many questions that our viewers have after our Spanish taxes video was out. We had a lot of very specific questions that were asked, and if we do not cover your question in this video, please reach out to Pro Spain directly. They've been kind enough to offer a 20 minute complimentary consultation to our viewers, and you can schedule via the QR code on the screen or the link in the description. With that said, we think it's important to start with what makes someone a tax resident in Spain. Um, well, uh, the thing is really, really easy to understand. He, to be understood as tax resident in Spain, it's necessary that you spend here more than 183 days. This means that if you arrive to Spain uh, within the natural year, at any stage of the, whole, of the, of the year to see it anyway, and you spend more than these 183 days, you become tax resident. This means that if you arrive to Spain after the 13th of June, this, uh, this one we are in it right now, you will not become tax resident in Spain until the next year. Why? Because you will not be able to spend this minimum days that the law requires to consider you. Another thing that is very important to consider is what about the absences? What if I move to Spain in April and I go on a trip one month? How does that work out if I come back after? Am I a tax resident or not? Should I show my stamps of the passport to calculate the specifically the days? It's not like this. Uh, once you enter before the 30th of June, the absences are not considered as really time spent of Spain in terms of taxes, unless it's more than three months. Uh, the two points more that so if we will take into account the general law uh, of taxation in Spain, so there is two points. So economical, for example, uh, center for you. For example, you can move here, but uh, your major your major incomes for this year uh, produced in Spain. So in this case, even if you come up to June, they can consider you like a tax resident. And uh, the other thing is if your family and your children are living in Spain. There seems to be some confusion about tax treaties 
and Americans have a unique situation where we have to pay taxes to the USA no matter if we are tax residents in another country or not. You please tell us how the tax agreement between the USA and Spain works. Uh, we know this, we have some American clients that suffered this. The thing is that between Spain and the USA, there is, yes, there is an agreement to avoid double taxation. And it shows us uh, some criteria depending on the type of the income it's generated, how to avoid to pay twice for the same thing, or how to deduct or take as a credit uh, part of what you already paid in the USA. In terms of um, the dates or the deadlines to fulfill the income tax declaration, we know that we're really close in date, like there in the USA between around April, and we start the tax campaign from April and until the end of June each year. Um, so yes, our American clients, when they are resident in Spain, in fact, residents, they already have to their taxes there when they call to us to do their taxes here in Spain. So in this sense, it's really, really important that you share all documents on your declarations that you can give here in order to be able to deduct the amounts that you already paid there. But at the end of the day, here in Spain, taxes are a little bit higher. So <laughs> normally, in, in general, and in most of the cases, we are able to deduct almost everything and yeah. still has a little bit amount to pay sometimes, not always. Okay. Uh, I think, but you're right. I think in general, uh, most Americans at least must realize that they're probably going to end up paying a little bit to Spain, but getting a credit for everything they've paid in the United States. If we speak about the wealth tax, yes, so here in Spain, it's considered like uh, income from insurance. So that's why when you come and, for example, you will become uh, a tax resident in 2024. So in 2025, from 1st of January to 31 of March, you will have to present uh, the form that is 720. Uh, it's some informational model where you declare just all that you have out of abroad. So out of Spain. Okay. So you will declare your current accounts more than fifty thousand uh, euros, uh, for example, insurance, uh, properties, uh, uh, participations uh, in some uh, companies, so stuff like this. And after that, so for with uh, this declaration, you are not uh, paying nothing. But after that, it uh, will be paid in income tax and uh, in wealth tax. And then after that, part that you need to declare it doesn't always mean that you need to be uh, pay taxes on it actually. Because yes, we have a minimum, but if you do not reach, you don't have, you don't have to pay. And let me clarify, they're all gonna be considered for the wealth tax. They're gonna look at the balances of a 401k account, an IRA account, and a Roth IRA account they're all going to need to be on the declaration and they all may be considered the balances for the wealth tax. Uh, from our point of view and according to the criteria that we have seen from tax agency, is yes, we would have to be included in the wealth tax. I also think that maybe for uh, somebody it will be very interesting to know what is the wealth tax because just don't uh, think that if it happens you have to pay the wealth tax. So uh, there is some uh, limit in each region that you have to be rise or not rise. So as I told before, there's two regions that are not uh, that uh, that's not paying such kind of the wealth tax. So it's uh, Andalusia where we are living, right. Marbella. Actually, that's why it's a very popular destination. And another one is Madrid. Uh, about these two regions, you can be sure that you are not going to pay. But it does look as though the national solidarity tax is going to continue to be extended then each year right now because it was our understanding it was a temporary tax. Yeah. Okay. For but. the moment, we don't have information that it will be extended in for 2025. Okay. 
but never knows. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. <laughs> And could you tell us if you are in Madrid or Andalusia, you know, it's, uh, I believe there's some type of a limit where you don't have to pay the national solidarity tax, yeah. correct? You have to pay the solidarity tax in case if your own assets in the world world and in Spain are more than 3 million euros. speak about the public pensions, they are not taxable. So if we are talking about public service, then no, only should have to be uh, taxed in the USA and declared in the USA, most important, and in Spain, the, the ones related to the private. Most of our of, of the answers of everything are on the on the agreement, on the agreement between USA and Spain. And basically, this article says that defines it uh, like we will consider that it's public any remuneration other than a pension paid by a contracting state. In this case, will be USA. Uh, or political subdivision or local authority, uh, they're up to an individual, okay, to, to, to the taxpayer, in respect to service rendered to that state or subdivision or authorities. That's the criteria we should consider. It's true, it's true, but we have to take into account uh, the, the following criteria. The first one, that it uh, should be your uh, constant permanently home. So we have been living uh, this um, house uh, to two or three hours. It depends on the region where you're going, because uh, this type of the extension is uh, a part of the region. So two or three, depending where you are, you ex uh, so, and when you sell it, you will buy another home that you are going to live, like your normal home. And so, in this case, you have to not uh, pay the capital gains tax. It's very important here to say uh, that, yes, it's an extension that it's a price because you are selling your home where you live to buy a new home where you will live. This seems to be really easy to understand, but if you buy a home and you're not going to live in that home and you're going to rent it out, it will be understood that you do not cook such with the requirements. So maybe you receive deduction and the tax agency sends you some years later an inspection. Very important to watch out with those things because tax agency in Spain has the chance or the opportunity to check during four years everything. So especially when it comes to grants or deductions, yes, we need to be very careful and that's why we always advise, not because we're advisors, you come with the help of a lawyer, <laughs> always. Meaning that you own properties in another country that you're receiving rental income from, um, we know that you're going to be paying taxes uh, for that rental income since Spain taxes your worldwide income. So how does Spain look at that income and are there deductions as well in Spain? How, how does that work? Income from rental from properties that you have abroad, you need to declare them in your income. Yes, no matter where the property is located, if you're a tax resident in Spain, you will have to declare it. If you are not tax resident in Spain, you will only have to declare this income if the property is in Spain. And also, yes, you can withdraw and uh, write up some expenses uh, related to the property renting. For example, I don't know, utility bills, some type of repairs that you have on the property. You can deduct them from the income. And Just to add something, we have to include in, in case of the rental incomes, we have to include in the general part. What is the general base? Because the income declaration in Spain, it's like you have the general base and saving base. The general base you will pay from 19 
to 37 percent. Okay, in the saving base, we pay from 19 to 28 percent. Right. So, case of the rental income, you you have the general base, so we will pay from 19 to 37. There are a number of people that are considering retiring in Spain uh, and as their parents age they will probably receive inheritances while they're tax residents in Spain. So, In this case is a, we have to consider that it's a original taxation, okay? So that means that for example uh, in Mateja we pay uh, certain person, in Barcelona another person, so it's very different. Right. Uh, if you uh, take inheritance from your per, uh, family from the first rate, in this case you will have bonification 99%. So you will pay less than 1%. Okay. That's perfect. This is the same about donation. If maybe somebody from the US would like to, be, to make your donation into your uh, family of the first uh, rate, in this case you will also bonificate the donation of 99%. Okay. In case, for example, of Barcelona, uh, you will have to do another percentage. So it's like five, seven, nine. I think maybe even more. No, it depends on the amount that you will receive. Uh, That's correct. It's a progressive scale there. Okay. And has no bonifications. Well, it has kind of a reduction when it comes from parents, but definitely you need to pay. So that's what we always, the first question we always ask the clients, Alina and I, is okay, where you plan to live? Because on that basis, <laughs> we are able to tell you how it's going to be. Yes, regulations can be very, very different, like very different. So, so yes, that, that's exactly how Alina said. So, Ponto Andalusia or Madrid, Madrid has the same regime as we have here. Okay, okay. Um, you, Alina, you mentioned, I think you said first family or first degree. So I guess it depends on your relation, how close, like is it a parent, a child, a spouse? It's, yeah, exactly. So okay. for example, your parents, children, um, and sister and brothers as well. Okay. A, a husband or wife? Husband or wife? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. So it depends if this, uh, this amount of income was decided by a court resolution or court decision, then we will not be subject to taxation here in Spain. Okay? It's something that is exempt okay. in a way. You put it in the declaration, but it's not subject to taxation. Another situation, maybe, I don't know, but maybe if this is post divorce and it's not, it's not a uh, it's not a court resolution who decided this income, then it's kind of understood as a private income. Okay. So in this case, the, the country where you have your residence will be the one who have the right to tax you. So if you are tax resident in Spain, yes, you will have to declare it. So yes, the first thing accountants, us as accountants and tax advisors do is ask you, do you have the court resolution, the court decision that grants you this right to receive this? Because if you have it by right, then you don't have to tax on that. So they just need to have the legal papers from the court stating that they are receiving this as part of the court order for the divorce. Is that for sure? Depends. Uh, so here we will speak about the Beckham Law, it's very famous, it's our favorite with floor. <laughs> yes, it is. So the digital nomad, we have two types. Digital nomad, self-employment, and digital nomad, like a worker. So this is a, a key to understand if you can apply for Beckham Law or not. You have to understand who of the digital nomads can apply for the Beckham Law. Just the workers 
who are working for a company and they can get uh, the special certificate from social security that they come here and uh, their social uh, insurance was paid in the United States, for example. There are different types uh, who will be able to apply. For, for example, you come here like a high qualified employee, so in this case you can apply as well or you start to work. Uh, you are a startup uh, visitor, for example, you, you have some innovation idea and you get the visa of startup. You come, uh, you come here and you open your company and you are doing this feature in your company. So you also will be able to apply to the back and forth. So in case if you have a rental income outside of Spain, you are not paying taxes. If you have ARS uh, 401, you are not paying for that. Uh, if you receive some dividends abroad in Spain, you are not paying for that. So you are even not um, present the uh, 720, the information declaration about what we were speaking. Right. Okay. Yes. So we there's quite a few tax benefits if you qualify. Okay. Yes, it's it's quite quite good. Like you only declare for the income generated in Spain. What I do think is really interesting because it's like, yes, it's like having it all. You you are able to be resident in Spain at the same time you pay taxes as a non-resident taxpayer. You do not pay over a progressive scale, nineteen and then higher, higher, higher. And you pay at the same. You pay a fixed rate of twenty four percent. It has some deadlines, so it's very, very important to know it since the very beginning. It, you consider this as an option to do not miss the chance to do it on time. Yes, yes. You start with, uh, when you become a tax resident, you start to declare it with, uh, with a model 721. It's also the information model, but it's just for crypto. And after that, it will be included in the wealth tax, it will be included to the income tax. Actually, now it's working, it's working as usual. But uh, it's true that in April it was like uh, questioned uh, by the government. So actually now they have some purpose to change. So uh, we will have, we will still have the golden visa, but not uh, through by properties. Okay? Through by properties. Uh, okay. Yeah. But it's uh, still now we are, don't have exact information. Maybe okay. yes, maybe no. I would like to know that the last year was the same situation, and uh, after all the discussion, they not go away with uh, this uh, point. Basically, it's, you are able to apply for it after you spent here in Spain two years of legal residence. Something that is really, really important to take into account is that you need to be legal resident the full, during the full uh, process, okay? So you need to count on your lawyers, give them the, the exact date, so they have the control of the times and the periods you are able to apply for it. But yes, definitely it's true. It's two years and we apply for many people. Thanks again. We really appreciate your time, Alina and Floor. And if you're looking for information on taxes or making a move to Spain, please reach out to Pro Spain Consulting. We've got a QR code on the screen and a link in the description. And these are the professionals that can help you figure everything out. Uh, we will be happy to have a direct consultation with your visitors. <laughs>